And sorry, the, the slides are a little bit difficult to see. If anybody, um, I really like doing this. If anybody didn't hear me or English isn't your first language and you want me to repeat anything, go like this. The people next to you, that motion's really hard to see, but it's really visible from the stage. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about the value automation can bring to making development more accessible. And when I'm talking about accessibility here, I don't mean accessibility accessibility. That's not, we're not doing a transcript of this, are we? That would be terrible. I mean like sort of accessible for folks who aren't sort of very, very big players. Uh, to give you a bit of background about myself, my name is Jessica Rose. Um, I'm American originally, so I often have to apologize for being a bit too chipper. Um, but based on the talk before me, our, br oh God, help me, Bristolites? Bristolites. That, that, that's clearly not right. <laughs> Bristol folks are also exceedingly chipper and happy, so I have no apologies whatsoever. Also, like Mr. Joe right before me, I used to be a teacher. So there's going to be a toe-curling amount of interaction in this. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask you to yell at me, which is fantastic. Um, and because I was a teacher of junior high school for a long time, there's also a treat at the end of this. So if we make it all the way through this talk and I don't break down into tears, I will give you my favorite GIF in the whole wide world. And I'm going to be talking to you about automation and different types of automation. And I really, really like speaking. I love public speaking because I'm a ham and it's, it's horrible. But I, I like gently deconstructed talks as well. So part of this is I'm going to be really interested to hear what you all have to say. So if you want to daydream a little bit and get a bit distracted, think of some of your favorite automation tools, stuff other people wouldn't have thought of. If anybody's ever been in a talk and thought like, I know better than you, there will absolutely be a part of that. And we've already seen an XKCD reference today, but we've got another XKCD. This is teeny tiny, but I'll make my slides available. XKCD made, it a, made a chart available of how much time you'll save. Here they say making it more efficient. But really, if we automate processes in our lives, how much do you save? And it's fantastic. Really looking at the fact that a great deal of investment for the stuff you do the most can be incredibly valuable. But having been a teacher and being a self-taught technologist myself, my favorite thing about automation is that it facilitates failure. And this sounds really weird. I really love the opportunity. I'm, none of my bosses are going to see this. I love the space and opportunity to fail wherever I can to learn great things. And this can be really difficult in technology. Who here works, for, who here has interviewed for or worked for a company that says, oh, you know what, it's fine to fail. This is a safe space to fail. Uh, keep your hands up if that was true. The, the camera cannot see you, I promise. All right. Oh, you work at Nexmo, shut up. <laughs> and that gets really difficult, the idea that as a team, you can fail because technology, we've got this beautiful mythology of individuals who've stood up in the industry and done really big things. Um, somebody yell one of these big founders, these big names in tech who built a thing and it's just them on the top of the mountain and they led a giant company. Y'all actually have to yell names at me or this gets real awkward. Gus? Gus? Oh, no, yes, sorry, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Gus, of course. Uh, Musk, who else? Dobbs. Zuckerberg. No Travis, it's just very... <laughs> And this would be fantastic. I love this mythology. I love narratives coming out of industries, but it's maybe a lie. You do have great vision. You do have great projects, but these individuals coming in are really backed by giant teams. You've got these solo person mounting the mountain with great vision, and realistically, that's not how that works. In environments where we want to fail and fail often to learn, constantly being the person who says, oh, I, I, I totally screwed this up, this is on me. That is almost always a bad idea for you politically. Uh, folks, put your hands up if you work for a giant, giant company. Oh, fantastic, this might not be as valuable for you, <laughs> this whole talk. There's, there's a GIF at the end, but if you wanna like, I don't know, uh, what was the cognitive load business? If you wanna daydream a bit, all over it. 
This talk's going to be the most valuable for folks either working for themselves or working in smaller projects, because we're really looking at how automation can help smaller projects get set up, scale, win, and fail a little bit better. So way, way back in the dim, dim dark mists of time, getting started in a technology project was something that was incredibly difficult and incredibly expensive. To set stuff up and to go ahead and build the thing, you needed access to incredibly expensive infrastructure. Like servers are machines, servers are incredibly expensive. Developer tooling is also not cheap a lot of the times. And what's really interesting is, we're moving a little bit away from that now, you generally needed skills, internally or externally, you needed team members or contractors who could do every bit of the thing. So Googling and copying and pasting off Stack Overflow, which none of you do, wasn't really a thing back then. And as your company grew and, grew and emerged and evolved, you'd need to continue to grow these skills. And I'd like to lie to you and say, you know what, this was totally possible. You could do this as a little scrappy company. But this came down to just having enough money and having enough time, which was really about having enough money. If you had the capital to buy a lot of these things and you had great guidance, you had an opportunity to really sort of in the wild west of the early tech industry, build and scale and win. But some stuff has changed. And there are a couple of things that I'm really excited about that I think are really, I'm not gonna lie and say evening the field. We're not living in that true meritocracy quite yet, but sort of leveling it out a tiny bit. We're gonna have the spoiler because we know I'm talking about automation at some point. Shared infrastructure is super cool. I'm not going to talk about all these in detail because it'll take about 12 hours. But if y'all are at the after party later, come and find me. I'll be drinking cider and I'm super happy to talk about these for like an hour and a half. Being able to just start up a droplet or, or spin this up on AWS or put this up on Heroku, that's incredibly new, relatively speaking, to the industry. It's cheap and it's fast and it's, it gets more difficult as you scale, but you can get started. You can do the thing. Access to educational materials, so needing to have your skills in-house. Anybody who wants to, who's got the time, who's got the bandwidth, can learn a new programming language all for free online. You can learn really, really fantastic things. You can get free online degrees. So far as educational nerds and former teachers in tech, this is a fantastic new place we've gotten to. And open source and low-cost developer tooling. Um, is anybody using stuff that's really, really expensive for, for dev tools right now? Yeah, just yell at me. What are you using? <laughs> You're like, I don't know, it's probably expensive. Somebody pays for it. Is anybody using stuff that's fantastically expensive? Adobe. Adobe? I'm, I'm trying to look at who has traveled back in time. Hello. <laughs> I'm not, I was joking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just going to be like, how, how are the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> Just jinko jeans, as far as the eye can see. Oh, bless. <laughs> and automation. So I think automation's one of the most exciting things that lets you sort of uncouple from the way we used to do things and do things a little bit faster and to focus on failure. So who here is using some kind of automation in their development processes? Cool. Yell at me. What are you using? I love how everybody gets real British all of a sudden to be like, no, God, no. CI systems? CI systems? Capistrano. Capistrano, cool. Yeah, many bash scripts. <laughs> many, many bash scripts. And I've heard again and again where people are like, automation, automation lets you fail faster. And people tend to say this in kind of a snarky way. And I'm really excited by this. They're like, automation absolutely lets you fail faster. And it lets you focus on doing the things you need, actually legitimately learning what you need. And I call this the cycle of investment through failure. And I've done a lot of consulting, and companies, when they're paying you some money per day, they love this idea. And nobody ever seems to put it into practice in any kind of way I like. So if any of you can go bully your companies for free to, to get comfortable with this concept, just tell them it's free money. And in this, we're talking about X. X is the thing. That's fine. We're, 
everybody here is probably better at maths than me. Everybody's comfortable with X being the thing. And let's say that you're working on a project where X is really the core part of your business. X is something you need to be able to know well. X is something you need to be able to communicate your, to your team members. X is something you need to be able to communicate to your users. You need to be absolutely killer at X. I need to know how to do this thing. I try and do this thing. It ends quite predictably. It's not going so well this first try. You know, I'm going to go back and do the thing again. It's still not going especially well. And that, that process, I don't know about y'all, but for me, that process continues for a while. You take a break, you look at Reddit, there are some cat GIFs. And then eventually, you get to a place where I'm trying to do this thing, this thing I need to know, this thing I need to have core, like a really, really fundamental knowledge of, and I can do the thing. This cycle of investment through failure means that I have spent an incredible amount of time getting this done, but in spending this time getting things done, I now have the knowledge within my team, and as long as my team treats me really well and I don't wander off for a new job in a year because they're paying more, they've invested in having this in-house. And this is a really, really fantastic cycle. But looking at automation, looking for places to automate things, a big thing is recognizing that you don't actually need to know how to do everything. And this sounds really weird. In technology, I think that we've got a big, big milestone, a big issue saying, I don't know. Uh, has anybody ever faked their way through a conversation they didn't know about? I love how a lot of people look terrified but aren't raising their hands. They're like, no, no, what have you heard? If you don't need to do the thing, you just need to do X. You don't need to know X. I'm going to automate doing it. That's fantastic. I'm done. I can spend my time researching and failing and learning at the things I really care about. And this is really unusual because a lot of times when I talk about automation, I go out and I talk to an audience and they're like, yeah, we use automation tools. We use te automated testing. And that's absolutely fine. Automated testing is fantastic. But I want to talk a lot about a little bit more. And this is really fantastic. Is there anybody here who's just getting into tech? Uh, you can just raise your eyebrows. You don't have to raise your hands, because that's often, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. See me after class. <laughs> and if there's anything I can do to help, I, I'm super happy to. So this is the part where we're just about getting ready to yell. I'm going to talk about some of my favorite non-testing examples for illustration. Has anybody played with IFTTT? Yeah, I love how the back row is just like, yes, we know we can yell, this is fantastic. IFTTT is one of my favorite things. Mm. I was gonna say ever, but like cotton candy, red pandas. This is still pretty great. It's, it's, it's better than cotton candy floss, better than candy floss, not quite as good as red pandas. Uh, and this is also my favorite way to talk about automation with folks who aren't in the tech industry, folks who haven't uh, worked with automated processes before. And this gives you the really cool opportunity to connect different services together. So say, do you know what? When somebody likes one of my pictures on Instagram, turn all the lights on my house to blue. There's no reason to do this, except that it's fantastic and the internet is wonderful. Uh, there's Zapier, which is kind of a more I don't want to say useful, uh, industry-minded IFTTT, which is a fantastic way to automate marketing processes and do some other really cool things. Uh, if you just want to do goofy things with different services you already use, IFTTT is fantastic. Um, has anybody used IFTTT in a professional capacity? Like, have, what did you do with it, please? Uh, for folks in the front or on the video, uh, using IFTTT to check for cron jobs and see how they've turned out. Cool. Oh, I saw. Oh, oh. No, no, I'm uh, tweeting from an RSS feed. Oh, cool. Tweeting. I'm really desperate to see if I can get it to automatically tweet from recognizing when my slides are done. But what would trigger it? What, I, this is an after class one. <laughs> You'd have to build a webby, yep. 
And I, I've always had a disclaimer because I used to work for them. They don't pay me anymore. I just legitimately like them. Uh, Dream Factory does automated API building. Uh, I know, I know, I know. A lot of you are making an appropriately nervous face. If you just need one or two APIs and they need to be absolutely glorious, don't use that thing. But if you have a project where you need hundreds and hundreds of APIs built, this is actually quite good. Uh, unless you secretly love building APIs, in which case, good luck to you. <laughs> My favorite one in the whole world, so I do a lot of work with folks just getting into tech, and I do a lot of work with folks who are really, really interested in building a prototype and showing off what they can do. Has anybody used RMADS, Rapid Mobile App Development? Cool. This is going to sound very much like a Facebook advertisement, but developers hate this. It builds incredibly ugly apps right now. It's uh, an app guy, as an example. There's a bunch of them. If you just want to see how things work and they don't have to be beautiful, RMAD is the most fantastic way of convincing a client or convincing your boss that you don't actually need that app. Giving, them, giving somebody the functionality and say, here's how this will work, is a fantastic way of convincing people you don't actually have to build the thing. RMADs are my favorite way of talking people out of giving me jobs. And the four big things I talked about, I talked about how I really, really love shared infrastructure. I love free, accessible education. I really, really love open source developer tools. And we've got the, com the combination of automation and free open source developer tools. BuildBot, fantastic. Go ahead and automate your builds, automate releases. It'll let you know if something goes wrong. And it's just open source. It lives there. Please contribute to it. It's accessible. And it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a huge company. You should probably send them some money. But if you're just trying your own thing for the first time, this is an incredible way to get things started and automate some of the it's, everybody hates releases, right? Huh? Maybe. I'm going to go ahead and say automate part of the process that everyone actually hates. And this is my favorite part because I'm going to ask you to yell or raise your hand depending on local politeness. Uh, tell me about your favorite automation tools. What have you used? What's great? You got to yell way louder than that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm American. This is not awkward for me, y'all. Like, sorry? Webpack. Anybody else? One, two, three, Webpack. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be a tool? Or? No, no, do what's in your heart. I'm within the bounds of reasonableness. <laughs> uh, Xcore. Xcore, Webpack? Y'all are like the most polite, happy audience ever. You're like, well, we can't possibly yell. Is this an audience of developers without really, really strident opinions on things? Because I'm, I'm super okay with this, but a little, a little scared. Any other cool automated things that you love? Bread maker. One more time? Bread maker. Bread. Oh, yes, I see. <laughs> you remember that thing I said where people sometimes pretend that they know what you're talking about? I was like, oh, yeah, bread maker. That's good for those, those no, bread, actually. <laughs> All right, and when I say yo, everybody says yo, yo. Yo. Well, we got some compliance, we're good. So if I was going to say that we need to automate all the things, is that a yes or a no? No. <laughs> Do you need to automate all the things? Yes. I feel like the more I ask this, the more it, automate all the things? Yes. All right, the people who said no, you got a lot of common sense. Another lesson here is don't, don't trust people just because they're on stage. Don't automate all the things. That's a terrible idea. Automate all the things, giant asterisk. Absolutely automate all the things, except for the things that are part of your core business that you really need to know inside and out, right? That's OK. Automate all the things, asterisk. Yes. yes. <laughs> people on stage, it's an un unreliable narrator thing. We can't be trusted. Absolutely automate all the things, except for the things you really need to know inside and out and be able to communicate to your users, and make sure that security signed off on things. Automate all the things.
other things plus this? Yes. <laughs> I love that there's somebody in the back who'd be like, I've been taught not to trust. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, but automate all the things, except for the stuff you absolutely need to know no matter what, and check with security before you do anything, and make sure it makes sense. Has anybody ever jumped into a project or jumped into a little side project where you're like, I'm going to make this more efficient? And six weeks later, you've forgotten like, who you're married to and what it was like to love and where you work. That's, that's just me. That's, that's good. Make sure, I'm always really hesitant to say this to anybody, but pass it through a common sense filter. Common sense isn't always commonly available, but before you check, start to automate something, if you're building a whole bunch of your own scripts internally, Check to make sure that you're not going to spend a lot more time on that, that you just spend doing the thing. So absolutely automate all the things, except for the stuff you must know, and except for the stuff that is going to cause security issues, which is a big thing. And you know, where the costs, both time-wise and your soul, are reasonable and sensible. And this is great. I'm telling you, you know what? Automation is going to make it possible for you to build more things on a small team. You don't have to know how to do every single thing. In a perfect world, it's going to save you time. And especially for, for developers, it's going to save you time out of doing the stuff you hate most. If you've got a task you love, never mention to your manager that that can be automated. Never, like automation, not even a thing. But automation just by itself is not going to be enough to make really the playing field level enough for individuals and small teams. I'd love to tell you that it doesn't, that your ideas, no matter who you are and no matter where you are, can absolutely win. What, what do we tell ourselves? You could be the next Facebook, the next Google, the next Tesla, the next, not, not Uber. <laughs> and while that would be fantastic, if I, if I had been a primary school teacher, I'd be coming to you and be like, no, dream big, you can do whatever you want. But I taught middle school and they're like stroppy preteens and they can, they can have a little bit of truth. The amount of money you're, you can bring in to your projects and to your companies is still absolutely going to matter. And cultural and structural issues that really limit people's ability to succeed or boost them to success are still going to continue to exist throughout technology. That's miserable, but there are always more and more places where we can help support people, help people get more done, and, and really sort of ease the transition. If you've wanted to help out a bit more, if you're thinking, hey, I know somebody with a tiny project, go ahead and see if you can give some advice. I, I often get teased that all of my talks are, everything is terrible, here's how to make things less terrible. Automation is fantastic, but everything is terrible. But here's how to make things less terrible. Uh, the examples I've used are IFTTT, AppGyver, Dream Factory, and BuildBot. So if you wanted to have a play with any of these, go ahead and check them out. And you all have sat incredibly patiently through me being really, really excited about automation. So this is the best GIF on the internet. Sorry, it's too big to fit in, in uh, Keynote. And if you don't believe that that's the best GIF on the internet, you can fight me on the internet at Jesslyn Rose. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jessica. Do you want to take...